Hello everyone, my name is Denise. I'm a counsellor and today I'll be talking on the topic approval seeking. Okay, so approval seeking I'll be talking mainly from the modality schema therapy. So approval seeking, okay, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking approval seeking is a very uh, almost societally accepted thing to do, especially if you are from a collectivist society like the Singapore uh, rain culture. Where, where, you know, women, we, we want to seek approval from our husbands, uh, from our bosses, from our children. Uh, we seek approval, maybe even sometimes on social media, trying to get as, ma as many likes as we can for maybe looking pretty, for our charitable pursuits, for our awards and accolades and degrees. All these are ways that, that we get approval and it's almost... Uh, non pathological or non it's not it's not not perceived as something intrinsically evil in some cases it can be even ego syntonic which means um it is aligned to my ego it's something it's just Denise who likes to get approval from people okay so but today under the schema therapy I'm going to talk about how approval seeking could be something possibly bad Okay, so let's just place it in the context of um, of narcissistic uh, narcissistic personality disorder of a person with narcissistic traits, as I've uh, um, discussed in other videos. Why do narcissists need so much supply? It it is it is almost uh, a very derogatory term, you know. Like for a narcissist, they don't change boyfriends, they don't change girlfriends, they just change supply. It is a derogatory term, not only for the person who is labelled as a supply, but for the narcissist himself. To say that it was never a real relationship, it was always a supply. The person who you are in a relationship with, your supply is here to give you ego validation. To prove to you that you are a good person. And, and that has a lot to do with what I'm going to discuss today, which is approval seeking. Okay, so under schema therapy, whenever you have a schema, which is like a long pervasive pattern, maybe that cuts across many different settings, um, it ranges from things that are quite easily understood, like failure, you always think that you're a failure, emotional deprivation, to things that are a bit more, you're not, not really sure what it means. So today I'll just talk about approval seeking. So you, there are three options when you have a schema, you can either surrender to it, avoid or overcompensate. So in this case, if you have approval seeking and you you surrender, you tend to act to impress others. If you avoid, then you avoid um, interacting with those whose, uh, yeah, whose approval is being coveted. And overcompensate uh, goes out of the way to seek the disapproval of others or to stay in the background. <laughs> so there's a whole class of narcissists there's the bunch of grandiose narcissists and the bunch of covert narcissists and then maybe a few stragglers who are, are socially inept. So who will raise up their hands and talk the most? Probably maybe the grandiose narcissists, right? They want the attention. Huh? They want to they those are those who have surrendered to the acts to impress, surrendered to approval seeking. They want to get approval from the lecturer and from the class so they talk the most. And then those who are covert narcissists, quietly feeling very prideful and superior, but keeping very quiet, those are those who possibly have either avoiding or overcompensating. And then there are the, uh, the socially inept, which I, I probably fall under, who don't even really understand what are the rules in the classroom, who just keep asking random questions. Those may be, may be approval seeking, may not be. But but they form in a they form a small minority. Okay, the the rule, the, the the point that I'm driving at is that your approval seeking schema may not act out very obviously as a person who wants a lot of attention. It might might be like quietly being angry that other people are getting attention. And then of course I guess there are a few who really just don't care. They just want to come in and clock the hours and get their masters. So so this is approval seeking. Okay, so that's kind of bad, like so called uh, um, pigeonhole everybody as some form of narcissist, which may not be entirely wrong because in the modern culture, 
Even uh, Jeffrey Young, the founder of Schema Therapy, said that everyone in New York, that was about 20 years ago, possibly has a personality disorder. Because of the pervasiveness of social media and all that, right now I feel that anyone who uses a lot of social media to get validation there, and, and, and basically like our young people growing up in this culture, tend to also have quite pervasive narcissistic traits. So I say it, and I say it quite unapologetically, my last example. Okay? So I'm just going to give you more examples of how this approval seeking plays out. For example, a man can have no concern about his own family. Do my kids have, have enough um, pocket money? Do, do, do they have someone to teach them their Mandarin? Um, who's looking up, uh, uh, picking them up from football class? Stuff like that, right? They, he doesn't care about it. But then when he walks past an old woman who's selling tissue paper and he happens to be walking with his bunch of colleagues, he will, here, this is $10. Then he will goes to the supermarket, he, 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 there's a, the person in front of him, oh, I can't pay for the groceries, let me pay for you. So, so you, maybe you're the wife and you're watching this and say, gosh, man, why is there this discrepancy? Why is he such an angel outside and at home he's so negligent? Okay. That's because outside, when there's an audience of random people or colleagues or people to impress, there's a chance of getting narcissistic supply. So, hence, the narcissist jumps at all these opportunities to get little bits of nuggets of supply and approval. So, at the very extreme, right, for approval seeking, uh, such people with this schema tend to also have affairs. Possibly the most powerful, most attractive, youngest person they can they can get their hands on so there's a constant stream of supply and validation that yes you're good enough see you're so good until such an attractive person would want to have an affair with you so you see this approval seeking if left unchecked right can lead to all kinds of 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 immoral behavior just to feel the ego I'm not saying the ego in a psychodynamic way, but I mean like to feel your, to puff up your self-esteem because your self-esteem is in fact very weak. In fact, in the very heart of narcissism and, um, and some of the other cluster B personality disorders uh, is, the, is the very, a very deep shame, a very deep guilt, you know, that cannot be resolved and hence uh, the person cope by forming a persona. But this persona is almost like a paper tiger very thin layer that can fracture at every any moment, so it constantly needs supply to 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 to, to uh, make it more and more robust. So okay, I'm going to go on a tangent and bring in a, a Catholic teaching that says that when you're not in a state of grace, any act of goodness will bring no merit to you. So for example, your immortal sin, like you're currently in an ongoing extramarital affair or you have murdered someone, you haven't confessed, you stole some money, you haven't gone, gone for confession yet, so you're not in a state of grace. So any good act done when you're not in a state of grace will not bring about any merit. So the pastor was thinking, well, that's really unfair. That's really unfair and it sets the bar so high, right? What if I, I, I did something bad, but I'm also doing a lot of good things, ma. doesn't it balance the equation? The answer is no. And it draws back to the approval seeking. Because when you're doing all these good acts, when you're still in a state of sin, uh, of unconfessed mortal sin, then you never know if, if that, that the act is done for your own, own perverse puffing up of your ego, or was it ever done truly as an act of love for God to God, right? Because I'm a friend of God, God loves all these people, so I'm helping them because I'm their friend. Okay? So, um, I'm also going to go now on a second tangent to tell you about my job as a counsellor. So as a counsellor, I deal with all kinds of people with all kinds of, of disorders and, and mental health issues and relationship problems and all that. Some of my clients I totally love. Some I find very hard to deal with because they are still in a state where they are generally quite demanding and quite unappreciative and they have unrealistic expectations of me. So in the past, I would be, I'll bend over backwards, try to meet their request. And, and, and no, if let's say sometimes it's a very minor request, like they just text me and they want a form of validation. They are looking for approval or looking from, of, from supply or for supply from me. In the past, when I was less experienced, I would just give in. But then once I give in, they get a buzz from me, then they'll keep messaging me. 
then they keep getting a bus and then it's like I'm colluding with them you know to 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 to, to perpetuate their pathology which I thought in the long run it's not actually being a very good therapist to be a good therapist I need to break the habit right so I've learned that if I sense that this person is trying to get approval from me try and use me as a form of supply or trying to uh, just just form a relationship with me that is anything but beneficial to them then I will from the very beginning not entertain it so Denise you're so heartless you lack compassion maybe so I of course this rule this line is fairly arbitrary it, it takes a bit of, of of testing is this person really in distress or is he really just asking for some attention or some validation because if he is then I need to 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 be professional about it and to be aware and professional about it because that will will in the long it might irritate them for a short time but it also build respect and it most importantly it doesn't sink my entire practice i got all these clients right if i start to give in to all the unreasonable requests all it takes is just one client to sink my entire boat and all the rest of my clients will suffer because i'm too tired dealing with that one person so in order to make it sustainable that i can attend to every single one uh, fairly equitably then I have to draw those boundaries okay so okay in summary approval seeking while societally acceptable sometimes when it cross a, a, a certain line it does get pathological and when we have approval seeking schema we can either surrender avoid or overcompensate which is to purposely blend into the background so it doesn't mean that if you are quiet in a class then you have no approval seeking or you have no pride. You still have it. It's just quietly growing inside of you, not expressed. So you've got no extra virtual points for that, all right? So, okay, sorry. I will add a certain point to that. So if you've got something to say in class, or you just say it. You just say it. If you've got a good point and you think that, yes, it's a good point, you just say it. You don't have to worry, like, will I come across as attention seeking? Or what? The, I mean, like, why, why think about it that way? Just... I'm going to contribute this idea to, to stimulate the conversation and uh, an interesting dialogue in the class, okay? And um, so that's one point. Second point, any good act done in a state of mortal sin is not, will, will not give you any merit precisely because of that. You don't know if you're doing it out of a good heart, out of, of a real godly love, or you're doing it to get supply, to puff out your own ego, right? And, and thirdly, as a counsellor, any helping professional, it's very important to be very uh, clear about what's happening. If a person starts bombarding you with messages uh, and expecting some kind of validation, that is a sign that the person might be love bombing and trying to use you as a supply. So it is important to be hard-hearted to draw those boundaries because you want to help the person get out of this pattern of behaviour, right? Then you cannot perpetuate it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about today. I hope it's been helpful. And if it has been, kindly press like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless.